Hey everyone, and welcome back to another of Chip and Rat's intersection build tutorial videos. Today we're going to be talking about this monstrosity, which is known as a continuous flow intersection or a displaced left turn intersection. To start, we'll be creating a bit of a four way intersection using three lane one way roads such as this. This is similar to what we did in the Super Street and Michigan left turn video. This works out really well because we're going to be using this from highways or arterial roads that are typically three lanes in each direction or a six lane road as a single road. The first thing you're going to do is take a two lane one way road and create it four units out from that very center interchain or intersection. You're then going to make it five units long so that you can create the right turn going from the east direction. You're then going to take a three lane asymmetrical road, or a one lane in one direction and two in the other, and you're going to connect it to that road from 10 units away. You can make it shorter if you want, but I think 10 units makes it look rather nice. That will create the second part of the lead in, which I like to use a highway ramp for, and you simply make that right turn going from the east west direction going towards the south this way. As you can see, you've got one lane leading in there and the two lanes that are going to be turning left. Then you create the rest of the left turn there using the asymmetrical road. And I like to go about 5x5 five five or a 4x5 turn to make a nice little turn there. And using a two lane one way road, you finish off the lead in for the left turn or the displaced part of the left turn. So now, if you're going from the south to the north, you can break off and turn left through there, avoid all that other traffic at the main intersection, and if you're going from west to east, you can make your right turn there and lead in going south, without interfering with anybody at that intersection. Sometimes you need to create a little scaffolding to get your nodes to line up, and I like to use the two-lane gravel road for that and then you simply get rid of it. Now we finish off our left turn by creating that two lane one way road. And for this you will need some road anarchy and then you use move it mod to simply make it look a little bit nicer until you get it how you like it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing that we did previously but with this southbound lane and create its displaced left turn crossing over the road towards the east there. This will make it create a little bit of a symmetry around the center of the intersection there, a diagonal symmetry. So we simply flip our screen around and we start the same process over again. We start with our two lane one way road and go four units out and then go approximately five units in. Let's make sure that lines up there. We then take our highway ramp and we create that right turn leading into that displaced left turn area. And we take our asymmetrical road, go 10 units. And then we create our 5x5 five five turn there to make it look all nice and even. Then take our two lane road, same as before, and connect that final remaining portion of that left turn and flip it around to make sure that it's going the right way. Now, if you don't have a lot of traffic or you have traffic primarily in one direction, you could leave the road here. However, we're going to be creating it in all four directions as we want to simulate a very busy road coming from all directions where traffic is very high. While the end result may look complicated, the process is exactly the same. Take our two lane one way road, go out four units from that main intersection, go five units down, and that will create the beginning part of our left turn. Simply finish off that left turn using road anarchy and a little bit of move it. Get it where you want it so it's nice and clean of a turn. 
Take your asymmetrical road, go down approximately 10 units, create the right turn using a small highway on-ramp or other one-way road, and then finish off the turn with the asymmetrical road with an approximately 5x5 five five turn and making sure all the lanes line up in the right direction. Finally finish it off by taking that little left turn bit with the two lane one way road. And again making sure all the lanes go the right way. That's three of the four directions down. We now flip our screen around and we repeat the process for the final direction which in this case is now the northbound lane on the screen. While we have all the main roads set up, we're now going to need to get rid of those ugly crosswalks, make it more pretty by adding little lane markings and intersection markings. But first, let's start with getting rid of the intersection or the crosswalks. Since I would probably have this on a major road, I want to get rid of all the crosswalks in the entire intersection just so that I can have some other walkway either elevated or underground or somewhere else. We're going to do this for every part of this intersection. Now we're going to do a little bit of lane mathematics on these because they're all three lane one way roads. In the very center of the intersection here, I only want these to be two lanes in each direction. I don't want them to be one lane as I don't think that'll handle enough traffic, and three lanes I think is excessive. So we're going to go through and make all of these inside ones two lanes. For the right turn here, I want these to be three lanes so that one lane can split off and make that right turn. So these roads are perfect as they are. One lane will split off and go all the way to the right, and the other two will simply go forward. For the areas where the left turn meets with the people going forward, I want this road, since they won't ever be in conflict with one another, or they shouldn't be in conflict with one another here, between the people turning left and the people going forward due to the traffic lights, I want this road to be only two lanes, which will make it perfect because this one right turn lane will add that third lane back on, which meets with our standard for a three lane highway or a six lane arterial road, three lanes in each direction. For the left turn, we have a little bit of a decision we can make. We have two left turn lanes here and three forward direction lanes. So really this should be five lanes, but I think I'm going to just have one left turn lane lead into both of those two left turn lanes on the displaced left turn so that this can be only a four lane road. That way there's not as much splitting that cars have to do off of the main three lane arterial road. And we're going to do that for all four directions and just give them a little bit of a merge in area. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our lane connector tools and do all of the things that we discussed doing previously. You can also use just the direction arrows uh, from Traffic Manager. However, for visual purposes, I do like using the lane connectors. Most of the lanes are fairly easy to set up. It's either a forward direction or a right turn. The only ones that get a little complicated are those displaced left turns where you have the one lane splitting off into two. Hopefully you get the idea. <laughs> it's a lot of lane connectors, but they're mostly just making sure all the cars go forward. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that all the cars can go clean through the intersections, since there are so many so close together using Traffic Manager's uh, little intersection restrictions tool. 
if you're finding problems with different intersections, like where people are turning left, you can prevent them from going clean through the intersection. But the way City Skylines works is that if any vehicle is in the intersection or would potentially block an intersection, such as where all of these are so close together in the middle, City Skylines will prevent a car from trying to enter that intersection, even if the cars in front of it are moving and the intersection would be clear by the time the car goes through. This is what leads to some of that stop and go traffic. Where these left turns are, we're going to put a yield sign here. You can put a traffic light there to help make sure that people aren't interfering, but it's not super necessary. To set up traffic lights, we're going to be using Traffic Manager's traffic light system, and there will be four to begin with on this intersection. Everywhere where the left turn people at the displaced left turn are going to be interfering with the people going forward. So that creates this kind of offset light pattern here. This still allows people to go right through the intersections, and it helps keep the left turns and the go forward directions from interfering. The setup for this is actually really easy. You can think of it as just people going east and west, or left to right, and north to south. To make it a little more simple, all of the roads are going either up and down or left and right through a traffic light. And the ones that are going left and right do not interfere with the ones going up and down. I like to start with a minimum time of 3 and a maximum time of 15. And we just say, take all of the people that are going either left or right and turn their lights to green through here. So you'll end up with four green lights allowing left turns from the east and west direction and going forward in the east and west direction. In this case, I'm going to set the max time to 30 simply because it is a larger road and sometimes traffic comes in in larger waves. For the second step, we simply take all of the green lights and flip them to red and all of the red lights and flip them to green since this is only a two-stage traffic light. We add it and we hit start. And there you go. There's your basic traffic light setup for this gigantic and overly complicated looking, but actually fairly simple intersection. As an added step, you can use your intersection marking tool just to create some lines, make it look a little more realistic, and show how you want traffic to kind of come in and out of the various areas of the intersection. I also like to use some of the paintbrush tools and use the paintbrush for uh, pavement. However, adding trees to the inside or some other decorations can make it look really nice as well. In this case, I've decided to go with the pavement simply because I feel like that's more of what you would probably see in real life, although the lanes would also probably be a little closer in real life and the pavement would match the, uh, the actual roadway there. Um, but it's just another added touch along with the intersection marking tool that is completely optional and has no other effect other than completely visual and how it makes your city look. Here's a look at that intersection in action with a fairly large amount of traffic. If you start to notice a bit of traffic building up like we've got here on the uh, east side there, turning left towards the south, you can add another traffic light right there and you can just and you can keep it on the same schedule as the other four traffic lights. You can add one at each of the areas where people are turning left so that you can prevent a little bit of that conflict. For this setup, you add the four traffic lights on the outside, and then you want the people going east and west to be able to go clean through that intersection at all times. So you leave the left turn signal red for the north-south direction. You tell the left turn people that they can go through so that since all the traffic is going east and west, nobody is going north and south, so you can allow the people who are turning left to go through there. For the second step, you simply flip all of the lights again, same as we did in that center intersection. 
And here's a quick look at that same intersection with the new added lights. Well, that is it for today's video on continuous flow intersections or displaced left turn intersections. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and a subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you do, Alfredo here says you should subscribe. Or maybe check out this video that YouTube recommends. Well, go on. Why don't you do it?